Hi, I'm Graham Cole, or probably better known as PC Tony Stamp from Sunhill Police Station, and I'm at your service. Now, the folks at whatsontv.co.uk asked me if I'd like to contribute to their Christmas microsite by answering some of their readers' questions. But I was only too willing. I mean, Christmas, it's a time of giving, not taking, and that's a message to any low-life stocking thieves out there. Tony Stamp may have handed in his cuffs, but don't think he doesn't know what you're up to. Any trouble, and you'll be Saint Nicked. Anyway, enough of the bad jokes. What questions have you got for me and the character that I played for over 25 years? Alexander, Surrey. What was the best part of playing Tony Stamp? Stunts. I got to drive police cars very fast around the streets of London. And also, what was fantastic was that the Met were wonderful to me. I did so much training with them that I was able to go out there and play Tony Stamp, drive Sierra One around the streets of Sun Hill, do all my own stunts, which meant that the camera could be put anywhere, and it was always me in the driving seat. It was very, very special. Also, the running. Oh, the running. Did we run for miles on that show? Kept you fit. Good question. Evelyn from Birmingham. What are you going to do now that you've left the bill? <laughs> That's a great question. I've told the wife and the kids this Christmas, you know, that, well, there would be no presents, there'd be no food, you know, we'd have to do a little bit of a Scrooge thing, because you never know, do you? Well, I have no idea. It's a funny business, mine, because um, usually around May time, the bosses are organising all the pantomimes. Well, I didn't leave the bill until the end of June, beginning of July, so I missed all of that. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of hoping that perhaps someone might go sick. I'm actually sticking pins in posters at the moment on any pantomime anywhere in the country, and then I'll just slide into their tights and take over the role. What do you think? A long-time fan of the bill from Dunstable. What's your favourite ever storyline? Oh, wow. It's a very small truncheon, that, you know. It's a difficult one to answer, really. That old malarkey was one that always comes to mind, and it was quite early on. It was Stamp's birthday. And he got locked into a flat of a rather strange woman with bars on the windows and doors, and he couldn't get out. And uh, Sierra won. They kept ringing him, goes, where are you, Sierra? Where are you? And he didn't want to tell him I'm locked in a room with a mad woman. So in the end, he had to pretend that he was dealing with something that he couldn't talk about at the time. But this girl managed to get his shirt off by throwing red wine over him. And then she went off to wash the shirt, and then she disappeared for ages. And then he knocked on the door, opened the door, and she was in the bath with his shirt. Now, wouldn't that be a favourite storyline of anybody's? Particularly Tony Stinks. Helen from Huddersfield. Do you feel institutionalised <laughs> after playing the same character for so long? Now, that's a great question, Helen. No, you don't, you know, because I've always done loads of other things. I used to drive the management mad at Talkback Thames because I was always ducking and diving. You have to do that. You can't just play one character. And as most of you know, I spent 15 years of my life in theatre in and out of the West End in musicals and all sorts of plays. And I just kept that rolling on. You need, as an actor, to keep pushing yourself, to keep stretching, to keep trying different things. I've also got a little rat on here. That's because uh, I'm a member of the Grand Order of Water Rats. Actually, at this time, I'm King Rat. Uh, I have that huge honour of running that organisation. And we look after the older entertainers that may be fallen on hard times or are sick, and we're there supporting them. But what is great about the Water Rats is that uh, I started off as a chorus boy with Del Font and Grade in 1974. And it was fantastic because uh, not only did I sing with all the girls and fronted all the girls with the feathers and all that sort of thing, but I was picked out to feed the comics. So it was a wonderful start to my career. And in and out of the West End, as I say, musicals, the whole genre of, of theatre, whether it be Eight Bournes or Shakespeare's, I'm, I've done the whole thing. It's been fantastic. Neil Simon was a great love of mine. And comedy, uh, those of you that really watch The Bill will know that if there was the merest chance, the chink, that I could get a little laugh in there, uh, I would do that as Tony Stamp. I love to make the audiences laugh, and it's very special. This is rather a large parcel, this one. Abby. What's PC Stamps' advice for having a safe, crime-free Christmas? <laughs> That's a great question. You know, one of the strange things about playing a policeman for so long is that people start to think that perhaps you are one. And one of the scary things is that at this time of year when we're at parties, I do actually have relatives coming up to me saying, how much am I allowed to drink before I'm over the limit? As if 
I would know the answer to that. I think um, it's to look after each other is the most important thing, whether you're out with your mates at parties, uh, if you're in the clubs, you know, make sure that one of you is looking after the handbags and that sort of thing. It's just keeping your eyes, just being aware, particularly the drink driving thing. I, I'm, I've seen so many lives ruined by drink driving and it's just not worth it. So uh, don't do that. Get a designated driver or, or get together and, and hire a cab. It's just being aware, isn't it? I mean, one of the things really that we've lost as our society's got sort of more technological is just looking after each other. You know, you, you may have uh, Mildred next door or whatever his or her name might be. Just knock the door to see if they're all right. And I think if we start looking out for each other again, whether it be on the streets or, or wherever. You know, uh, only yesterday I was driving down some quiet country lanes and there was a car in a ditch, you know, and I just stopped and asked the driver, was he okay? And he said, yeah, they were. And he had his, his girlfriend and they were fine. And he just said, you're the first one to stop and ask. And all the other cars are just... And that's all it's about, isn't it? It's just caring about each other, just uh, being aware. Well, thanks for all your questions so far. I'll be back with part two very soon.